you click on this attendance, there you go. You'll see right here it is period three. I can do period two attendance. Okay, so when you're doing your attendance, it still keeps it, same with your grade book, you still keep your, your periods together. Okay, so I'm gonna take attendance on period two. Okay, now, I can mark them all present, so now they're all here, or unmark them all. Okay, now you can do this by the list, but here's the best way to do it. I, I wouldn't do it by this because it's like what you're trying to look, okay? I like to do, you'll see the list, here's class. You click class, now you make a seating chart. So I'm gonna take Aiden Straw, I'm gonna put Aiden right here. I'm gonna take uh, Ashley Stanton, I'm gonna put her over here and make sure she's six feet away. We got great, uh, great, <laughs> you guys can laugh whenever you guys hear some of these names, let me know uh -huh. what I'm dealing with, yeah. okay? Yeah. I got Caleb Stillwell, I'm gonna put over here. I've got Chris Brown over here, I'm gonna put uh, Blaze here. You know, however you want to make your seating chart. Okay. Now, back to this real quick, once you get this seating chart made, like we put on the like in last, however you guys are gonna do your, you make it look like your classroom as far as where they sit, okay? Now, once I get all these in here, I'll show you how easy it is to take attendance. And I'm just gonna, inter while he's doing that, I'm gonna suggest that you can you consider strongly doing alphabetical seating. Yeah. And here's why, I don't know if any of you had a chance to look at that document I sent you last night, yeah. the second one, but so what's going to happen is if a student is positive, test positive for COVID, <clears throat> we're going to have to look at and see who, who is within six feet for 15 minutes or more. So anybody they sit close to in class is going to be a close contact. They're going to have to be quarantined. But in high school and middle school, that's all classes all day long. Right. Now, if we mix up, if we do alphabetical all day long, chances are we're going to have some of those same close contacts would be repeats yeah. because you know a lot of those kids follow each other and if it's alphabetical just it's going to happen anyway if we mix up the order i mean we can do what we want i'm not going to tell you well maybe i will so but i'm at this point i'm strongly suggesting that you consider alphabetical seating because if we start getting positive cases and i think we will it'll be fewer kids that we have to quarantine and it's 10 days is what they're saying now I don't know, some of these like IEPs that have preferential yeah, treating. Uh, about the so IEPs, it has to have preference, preferential treating. Preferential is, that's why we write it as preferential. So, we, I mean, we'll still follow IEPs. There are going to be exceptions. But again, if a kid has a preferential seating IEP, if we can be consistent about how we do that, it's, it should help us in the amount of kids we have to send home for two weeks at a time. All right, so once you get this made, Right? You've edited it now. Let's say you got a kid, for example, he's you know going to be doing the virtual thing, but he's still on your list because he's in your class. I don't know how that's going to work, but sometimes you may get a homeschooled kid or something happens. Maybe you, know, you don't have to keep attendance on. If they don't, if I don't want to do that, I can move them back over to here. And all of a sudden, now I won't see them on my seating chart. Okay? So they're easy to do. It's easy to move the seating charts and change the seating charts. So now all of a sudden you have, now, let's take attendance. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you go through your scene chart, you look, you look, you look, you start with mark everyone present, and you're like, oh, what, you know, she's not here, bam, she's out. All right, you hit it again, it turns into orange, party. Okay, so that way you can kind of know who's absent, who's tardy, who's present. So it's really easy to do your attendance, because like I said, I mean, I do this all the time before we went into COVID, I'm like, man, I love this. Beginning of the period, they're doing their bell ringers, I take my attendance real, real fast, they're not here, not here, not here, and all of a sudden I'm done. All of a sudden, somebody just came in the lake. Well, if you already did on Harmony, now you gotta call down to the office and sit there and say, hey, can you change this? They came in the lake, they had a pass. Okay, so, you know, they come in late, bam, I'm right here. Now, I've taken my attendance here, I'm kind of doing something else, a little bit later in the class, whenever the kids are doing stuff, then I will take this and do Harmony. Because you have to, you're gonna have to take attendance twice now. You need to do on now what I like about this is you know this was today okay tomorrow okay tomorrow's the 30th okay I take attendance hey you know what while I'm taking attendance I may want to go back just real quick who wasn't here yesterday
and maybe give them a reminder, like, hey, this is what we did yesterday, make sure you get this taken care of. It's really easy for you to sit there and see who was absent and who was hard on Okay, you, go back, you go back for the entire nine weeks, the entire semester, and find out who was here and who wasn't here. That's where it's going to come in handy for the office and the COVID as far as track. So you can constantly... And we can change it ourselves. Like I said, if something comes in late, he's supposed to get to tell the office. <laughs> so they weren't really asking, they were actually here, okay. they came late. Now, like now, here's what's kind of nice. So, this is really easy to do. Like I said, Mark all present, and then you just look through the classroom, and it's easy to, to visualize. I mean, you get this attendance taken like that, okay? Then you start, you know, class or whatever's doing on something else, and then, like I said, I eventually go to Harmony and then put it in. So I'm not always calling the office saying, hey, they showed up late, or, you know, this or that. Um, that kind of helps out. Now, here's the other thing, and, and I'm going to unmark this, and I'm going to go to uh, my, my other class because I've done this. When you are setting up, well, I'll just do it in here, okay? When you are setting up this list, all right, you're going to see this more. When you go to this more and you click on their name, it's going to tell you how many times they were present, how many times that they were late, how many times that they were absent. Now, you can do this from this also. You can go from the class. I can click on Luke DeJarnett, okay, and it's going to tell me, how many times he was present, late, and absent? Which is nice. All right? Because they're going to give you for the whole semester. Is there any way that you could color code which one's got an IEP? So just visually, since you're not going to be able to put all the kids where you want preferential treatment wise? What you can do, and I don't know how this is going to work with the IEP type situation. I mean, I mean, you could for, 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 for your thing. So here's what I'm going to show you this. You have what's called add a badge. Okay? Now, when you click it, add a badge, you know what? Um, whatever you want. They came to class not prepared. They were tardy. They were disruptive. Um, they didn't bring their Chromebook. Um, they had great, great class participation. Hey, they were helping someone else out. You can create badges and make these badges. Now, 